So 17 million is a big number, but for this guy, it's not that much. If we just look at his account size, it's kind of petty chain. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the setup that I wish I learned earlier, and I should still probably just focus on that at the moment. So before getting the video, a quick reminder that all the best tools will be linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. So the strategy we're going to be going over is going to be how to master EP setup. So to give a bit more context, here's the setup and the breakdown of it. So when we look at this chart, we can see that it consolidated for this time period over here. It tried to break out just over here. It didn't. But when it finally did on the earning release, because we can see it on a chart over here, the stock was pretty much gone and it went from 15 all the way to 26 without ever really pulling back. If we look at something like Snap, we have different type of variation. We have a stock that's been stuck in a range since February and all of a sudden earnings comes around and here we go we get this big gap above and after that we have a really really nice move same thing with cvna stocks consolidating after earnings over here and all of a sudden we just gap above it seems quite simple in terms of strategy but there's a lot of nuances when it comes to trading that because you can either trade it on the earning release or you can also trade it when the market is open but either or it's going to be a short time swing trade so when it comes to tracking this setup because it's something Thing that's really easy to track the first thing i would do is i would go look at gap on chart in trading view or even ibkr because it shows you the earning on all of these charts so this is a simple way that you can really track these setup or go and review if you don't want to use this method you can use a website called edge to trade or other historical data platform to just get you that data but there's no real point of paying for something when you can just find it by looking at chart and looking at gap when it comes to looking at the historical chart because you're going to need the entry day that means the pre-market and the after hour chart going sometime a few years back if you want to do this for completely free just use the website bar chart and i also have a video that i'll link in the description that's going to be really breaking down everything that you need to know about how to get a historical chart for free so going back to this strategy there's a few things that i would do differently compared to Kuala Maggi, which i think is a much better trader than me but there's also an advantage to being a smaller trader. He's trades so big that he can't really take any position in the pre or post market on that news. Sometimes he does, I guess, but for the most part, he waits until the open and when for a setup when the market is open. If you're a bit of a smaller trader or maybe much smaller than him, what you can do is you can get in on the earning release if there's a setup or if you're able to time that entry properly, and this is what we're going to be going over. So if we go back to the example we had on CVNA right here, the recent earnings, and we'll go over a couple examples to really break down how I would take this trade, how I would execute it, exit the position, and so on and so forth. So for this trade, we can see that we have clear level and going into earnings, CVNA was already in play. It was trading a decent amount of volume. People were talking about it online, so it was very easy to track and the earnings were talked about online. Online. You can also add the previous day high or the current day high if it could be important or if we're really close. So going into the execution, we're really tight or really close to the higher time frame level, which create the EP breakout. So the way I would execute it is as I see it going into these level, I would go and buy over here and maybe just above when I get confirmation that the stock is moving. And then I would have my stop at the reference price. So that means the price before for the earning release and in this scenario this would be my stop so my risk would be just calculated between 95 and also this 85 so 10 points of risk by the way if you enjoyed this video so far don't forget to like subscribe i did link all the best tools in the description let's get back to the video and a good way to go about this risk is game planning before the earnings release. So you can say that, okay, this is about the close price around 86. So maybe if we get about 93, 94, I'll buy around X position because the earnings go really, really quickly. You can't really decide as the price move how much you're going to take. So you have to just do the calculation around what you think you're going to be able to get and what do you expect in terms of a move. So when we look at this, like I said, it's going to be about 10 points of risk on that trade. And then when it comes to exit, I would look to exit on the daily chart because it is a swing idea. So on this, we can see that these little white line over here are going to be my entry 
And when it comes to my first exit, I would do a trailing stop on the previous bar low. So that means as soon as we break the previous bar low over here, I would exit my first tier of position. And for the rest, I would trail it either below that low a day over here or a moving average. That means that no matter what happened, because I sold some for a bit of profit, I should be green on the trade. And this is the goal of this strategy is to have a really important level to work around and to be able to be in a trade for a couple of days because it is a swing trade. For the leftover of the position, if we go back and look at more example, we can see that it's really important to keep some on because you never know how much these can go, but you're also protecting yourself by making sure that you have a stop and you already took a certain amount of profit and here's a good example of snap when it had a pretty nice ep over here so this was the ep so that means your entry should have been somewhere around these line over here and the first exit should have been right here so for the rest depending on how you trail this if you decide to trail it on the 20 the 10 or maybe the 50 you're going to be trailing this position for either a couple weeks over here as we can see or me be here a couple months and it would have been a home run trade so this is why it's important for these type of trade to really hold this position for as long as you can and as long as we're trending here's a good example with nvidia over here when it, the sector was pretty hot over here you could have bought that earnings release which was going to be the ep your first exit would have been right over here. And after that, if you decide to trail the 10 or maybe trail the 20, your exit would have been somewhere around this over here. And you can see you're getting a really, really good risk reward when you're playing this properly. So this strategy is not as simple as it looks because there's a lot of things that are gonna be important is how much spread there is because on earning release, sometimes there's a lot of spread. How hot is the sector? There's going to be a lot of small variants that I think are important to track. And I made a checklist to be able to cover what is important if it's a strategy that you'd like to go deeper into and really track and trade in the future. But if you want to find the next one, this is what's going to be important is you can go on a website called Earning Whisper or you can go on Benzinga and just look at who's releasing earnings. But for simplicity and also cost, to make sure it's zero, you can go on earning whisper and just look at the calendar over here and just check out for the date or the week or something like that. You can decide to upgrade if you want. I never did, but look at the stock, you know, go look at the chart, see what it looks like, create yourself a game plan, and then you can execute on. When it comes to how the stock is performing, going into EP, and what I think is important to track is what's a position in the one week range, position in the one month range, position in three months, or position in the six months so this could seems a little complicated or annoying to track but all of these eps are normally going to be at the top of their range so that means if the stock has a range of three months it's going to be near the top of that range so it's important because you can discredit or eliminate a lot of earnings that are not going to be filling or being into that category because a lot of earnings are going to be releasing at the same time so if you don't have your basic filters to know which earnings to look at, it's going to be a headache. So this is why looking at how most or the best earnings or the best EPs, where are they positioned in the six month, three month, one month or one week? The following thing we're going to be looking at is sector or team over here. This year, beginning of the year was AI. At a certain point, it was cannabis. At a certain point, it was some other sector. So it's always important just to track what's hot and what's not because most are big EPs are going to be in a hot sector because a lot of people are going to be looking for it and a lot of big company and funds are going to want to join this trend because maybe they missed the last earnings so they want to get in on a catalyst and this could be their chance and also how did the other earnings play out this is really really important and the last thing if you want to build this strategy and implement this in your playbook what I would really recommend is what is the optimal entry and exit for this strategy and also the why. Because maybe you want to enter in the pre-market or post-market on the release, but why? Maybe you want to exit here for the position, but also why? Is it just a risk reward or is it a time constraint? Are you working a full-time job or do you have time to watch the pre and the post-market? And what makes an A plus versus a B or a C? So as usual, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.